I'm going to show you how to install a hard drive into your computer. I know many of you already know how to install a hard drive, but there are many who don't. And even though this is such a simple process to people like me or you who already know how to install one, there are many who do not, even though it's just like plugging two cables together. Now I'm going to explain that and make it as simple as possible and what to do. This, in the case of this hard drive, is a solid state disk. It's a 2.5 inch hard drive. This hard drive right here is a 3.5 inch hard drive. This is your normal desktop size hard drive. This is your normal laptop size 2.5 inch drive for your laptop. But in the case of solid states, they come in the size of 2.5 inch drives. I'm lucky because the case I have right here is the custom desktop case and I have a custom built computer. It already has a mount made for SSDs or these small hard drives. It fits perfectly right in there. In the case of your computer, you might have only these mounts and you might, obviously it's much smaller and it won't fit. Some of these come with mounts or you can buy mounts which you can screw onto the sides, see the screw holes right here. And then it will fit into this slot and slide in like this and stay in there. But in the case of my tutorial, since that's fairly simple, if you look up um, 2.5 inch converters to 3.5 inch, you can find those somewhere like $10 online. Or many SSDs include converters that come in, you can, they include it so you can fit it in there. But in the case of me, I'm just going to install it in the 2.5 inch drive bay right here and it fits perfectly and I'm gonna in the case of me I'm gonna have to turn my case around to make sure I get my wires right you might might not have to and once I get my case turned around I'll explain how to plug everything up and what cables are what and how well everything's gonna work out okay we have now turned our computer around a good thing to do before you touch any parts or connect anything inside your computer is to unplug the power back here make sure you don't electrocute yourself or short circuit anything or anything of that matter but when we look right here you will see my specific case the back panel come up come can come off but in your case that might not be possible so you're gonna have to do this from the front side for me it's much easier to do it from the back or it gives me better wire management see all my wires are stuffed in the back so you can't see it from the front my specific setup yours it will vary by setup unfortunately but as you can see here if your SSD does not come with a SATA cable your computer might have an extra one or what you might have to buy a SATA cable right here depending on your SSD SATA 6 or SATA 3 depending how everything works out but I have a SATA cable right here and what you're also going to need is a SATA power cable I have an extra one right here that's connected all there's one already right here is one loop that connects into my power supply and I have an extra power cable right here for my hard drive you might not have these if you have a little bit older computer but there's adapters you can buy or you might have an adapter and extra cables you have laying around they're very easy to find it's called a Molex right here 4 pin power to a SATA power connector you can find online, I'm sure real cheap off eBay or something like of that matter. But most SSDs, make, you can buy kits for like $5, 10 more that will include these cables already and make your life much, much simpler uh, if you don't have extra cables like I do laying around. But when we go here, I'm going to bring this a little bit closer to get my hand around, actually. I'm going to pull out the SSD from the back side. right here and all I'm gonna do is plug this I actually have a special L cable that came with came with one of my motherboards before and that allows it to go up like this so it gives me better wire management you connect this in here you put that drive back wherever you want to mount it this can hold two drives so I'm gonna put it right here this cable is going to wrap around into where my SATA ports are. I'm going to show you those afterwards. 
And here's where my SATA port is. I'm going to have my cable wrap into here. I'm going to turn my case around to be able to plug it in. But before I turn my case around, I'm also going to have to plug in this cable, my SATA power cable. Plug in my SATA power here. That's plugged in. Everything, if I turn on my computer and the SATA cable is plugged in, it will just work. But now we're going to go put this back in, get these cables situated. And when that is done, you will have officially installed a hard drive into your computer. Okay, our case is now flipped around again. And as you can see, your two wires back here are connected to your SSD that's right here. In my case, I'm not going to connect screws or anything because I'm going to be messing around with this. What you want to do is to permanently make sure this doesn't get knocked, rocked around is there will be screws that you will put on the side right here that will come with your case or sometimes come with the SSD. This SSD specifically did not come with screws. That's not a big deal for me at all because I, I have screws laying around somewhere that will fit this. It needs very small screws that will fit through these holes right on the side. Keep this secure from... So it doesn't move around. The SSD is the point of it. It's rugged, so even if it does move around, it's not going to hurt it. And like a normal hard drive like this needs to be locked into place. See, it's not moving. Okay, see, we have this cable right here. This is my ID cable to my TD drive. It is blocking my SATA port right here, so I can't see it. So I can show you what a SATA port is. I'm going to unplug this IDE port. And wrap it around back here so we can see what we're looking at. That's stuck there. Now I'm going to zoom in here and see if I can focus in on it. Now that we're in focus, you see is my old SATA cable is connected into the SATA ports. It'll be pretty obvious on your motherboard what SATA ports look like and it's pretty hard to mistake what these plug into on the sides, usually on the side or bottom right, usually on custom boards or on Dells, usually, you will, trust me, you will know what they look like. They're usually different colored ports than the rest of the color of the board. See, these are black. You keep the color because if you're probably going to buy one of these, you're probably going to know what a SATA port is. So it's just common knowledge for people who build PCs. But for the ones for you who do not know that, it's usually a different color. So then you will obviously you can see that these will align. It's the same kind of like an L sheep port. But once you find that, you will just simply plug it in to your port. Just like that, boom. You're plugged in. You'll have both hard drives. In my case, I'm going to keep my second hard drive, which my operating system is on now. And use the new drive for the operating system. That is just, the old drive is just going to be extra storage. So it doesn't really need to be fast or anything, it just needs this extra capacity. And that's all you do to plug it in. If you're like me, have a back, you put your wires back in, you get it all sorted up, you make sure you have anything you unplugged like this, plug it back in, I'm going to do that later. Plug it back in, make sure if you don't need to take this out again, to screw it in. And turn on your computer. If this is new for you, then install an operating system and a cop copy something over. I'm gonna have a video, if not already, under my channel to explain how to install an operating system. More specifically Windows 7, but the process is very similar for each operating system of Windows, that is. Please comment, like, favorite the works to this video. It helps spread the word. If you know people who want to install a hard, hard drive, don't want to pay people extra money to install a hard drive for them, to be able to find that cheap price offline and you're a do-it-yourselfer but you just need that little extra help from somebody I hope this really helped you if it has please subscribe for more of my tips and I'll see you next time